follow people. So I can't remember if it was last week or the week before. If you remember, I did a Harry Potter books ranked video. You can watch that by clicking the card up here. I ranked the Harry Potter books from my least favorite to my favorite. And today I'm going to do the same thing with the Harry Potter films. Before I get on with the video, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to join my little magical corner. And if you like this video, then please don't forget to leave a like. Okay, so I found ranking the films so much easier than ranking the books. I think everyone else can agree it's so much easier to rank the films because there's so much more flaws and so many more things wrong with it. They are adaptations of the books, so... Yeah, I did find it much easier ranking them and I found it so much easier finding things wrong with them to explain why they rank so lowly. So yes, I'm going to actually really enjoy doing this video. So I'm going to start off with number eight because I'm counting Deathly Hallows part one and part two as separate films because that's what they are. So number eight for me, my least favourite Harry Potter film is The Half-Blood Prince. I could actually go on forever about all the different things I don't like about the Half-Blood Prince film. If you remember from my book ranking, it's actually my second favorite book, which means it must have been a pretty bad adaptation to be my least favorite film. <laughs> we'll start right from the beginning, shall we? When Harry is in this muggle cafe, he's reading a magical newspaper in broad daylight. He's away from the protection of the Dursley's house. His godfather has just been killed and here he is, chilling out in a muggle cafe, chatting up a muggle. I see nothing wrong with Harry chatting up a muggle in a time when it's more convenient and appropriate to do so. This was not the right time to do something like this and it just really, really annoys me because it didn't happen in the book. So why are you wasting time with it? But the biggest thing that annoys me about the Harper Prince film is the scene where the burrow is burnt down because it doesn't happen in the book. Um, I, I want to stress here, okay, that whole scene where the burrow is burnt down is a phenomenal scene, you know, it's beautifully done, perfectly done, it's absolutely brilliant. It has you on the edge of your seat, it's, it's such an awesome scene. If you separate it from the fact that it doesn't happen in the book, and it's just such a waste of time, the waste of time with a scene like this, they miss out more important scenes that should have been included that were actually important for the plot and the love stories between Ron and Hermione and Harry and Ginny. Of course they had to be included in the films otherwise we'd all been moaning that they weren't included in the films but I just feel like especially with the whole Ron and Hermione love story kind of thing they wasted too much time emphasizing on that. The whole feeling I get from the Harper Prince film is that it's, it's a bit of a joke. There's a lot of funny scenes in there and yeah, you can't help but laughing, especially when Harry is under Felix Felicis and when Ron is under Love Potion. These are really, really funny scenes. But because of these scenes, I just feel like Couple of Prince is a bit of a joke, whereas in actual fact, the book is actually a really dark and serious book. There's just such a contrast between book and film and the fact they missed everything out. And, you know, I, again, I can go on forever about how much I don't like the Couple of Prince film. I don't hate it. It's still a Harry Potter film. I still enjoy watching it, but I do have to keep stopping myself from moaning about it. I'm gonna stop right there. I've made my point clear. My least favourite Harry Potter film is The Hubbard Prince. <laughs> Number seven for me is Deathly Hallows Part Two. I hate the fact that the last Harry Potter film is one of my least favourite Harry Potter films because it's the Deathly Hallows, you know? It, again, if you watch my book ranking video, you would see that Deathly Hallows is by far my favorite book. It is superior to the rest. So it's so, so disappointing to feel this way about the last Harry Potter film. They miss out a lot of things. They change a lot of things. And it's some of them are just really unnecessary and really annoying. One of the most annoying parts of Deathly Hallows Part Two is the part where Harry and Voldemort are just stood on a random tower somewhere. Voldemort says, why do you live? And Harry says, because I've got something worth living for. And then they grab hold of each other and then they have this really over the top, dramatic flying spiral around the castle to the get to the bottom. It's like, what? Why, 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 what? You know, that, that's how I felt when I first watched that. I hate the fact that the scene where Voldemort kills Snape is in a crystal boathouse and not in the Shrieking Shack. And I love the fact that it's in the Shrieking Shack because it's like our little connection to 
the prison of Azkaban. You only ever go to the Shrieking Shack in the prison of Azkaban. It just feels like that nice little connection between number three and number seven. Harry snaps the Elder Wand in half instead of repairing his own and putting the Elder Wand back where it should have been. Again, I can go on forever about all the things I don't like about the Deathly Hallows part two film. And again, it's so annoying and sad to say that I really don't like the very, very final last Harry Potter film. So yeah, number seven. Deathly Hallows part two, unfortunately. Number six is The Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm not basing any of these on the actual canon storyline. I'm basing these on adaptations and films themselves and being part of a series. And I say that because when I watch The Prisoner of Azkaban, I don't feel like it's part of a series. You can tell it has a different director. Everything is just done so, so differently. The end result of the film, I, I, I'm no film geek, I don't know terms and how things are done or whatever, but The Prisoner of Azkaban is so much more different to the rest of the films, and I'm not just saying that about the storyline. In fact, it's nothing to do with the storyline. The whole production of it just feels so much different. They changed so many of the sets. If you look at Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, the films, the grounds in particular, you look at the grounds, and that's how you imagine it in the book. It looks more more like the book. You go to Prisoner of Azkaban and they've got to run down this bloody mountain to get to Hagrid's hut and yeah okay it looks so beautiful but again it's not realistic to the books and it's not realistic to the two previous films. They changed the location of the entrance to Gryffindor Tower. I understand they had to do that for when the fat lady is attacked but it's still a bit annoying that it's just in the middle of a staircase where all the other houses can just see where it is. Speaking of the fat lady, Dawn French being cast as the fat lady is, in my opinion, the worst casting in the entire series. I have nothing against Dawn French. I like her as a character, as a comedian, but she should not have played the fat lady. It, she just completely ruined the character. Prisoner of Azkaban, as a standalone film, if you don't connect it to the rest of the story, if you concentrate on it as a standalone film, it's a really good film, a really good enjoyable film. It's actually a fairly good adaptation. So in terms of the storyline, I don't really have a problem with that. Number five is Deathly Hallows part one. We are now starting to edge ever so slowly onto the films that I don't mind as adaptations, that yes, they still miss things out and change things, but it's not massive things that are detrimental to the main storyline. Deathly Hallows Part 1, as an adaptation, isn't actually that bad. All the scenes from what I can remember, again, I've not watched it in a while, but everything that I can remember is fine. You know, I don't have masses and masses of problems with it. The only thing I will say is that I don't like the way they did Dobby in part one. You know, he's got these little booties and he's like, yeah, badass Dobby. He's nothing like the Dobby from Chamber of Secrets, which is made even more annoying because Dobby is in more of the books than he is in the films. If you only watch the films, you only ever see Dobby in Chamber of Secrets. And for film watchers, pure film watchers, it's like, oh my gosh, that's that house elf from like 50 years ago. Whereas us book readers are like, oh yeah, Dobby, our old friend, we see you around a lot. They just completely revamped Dobby. I also don't like the way they did Harry under the invisibility cloak. I preferred the way it was done in Philosopher's Stone. I understand that technology has got a lot better since Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> but the simple way they did it in Philosopher's Stone, for me personally, was I thought was so much better. But yeah, apart from that... It's not a bad adaptation, it's just the fact that the first half of Deathly Hallows isn't that exciting. <laughs> Which is why it's still a little bit lower, because the rest are a bit more exciting, I guess. Number four is Order of the Phoenix. Quite interesting, because Order of the Phoenix is one of my least favourite books. I guess because, again, I don't see it as a bad adaptation. I don't mind it. Again, I know, I know, I know there are some things missed out. They should have included the two-way mirror, because when you get to Deathly Hallows and you get to that little shard of broken mirror, that makes no sense. That's another thing I should have included about Deathly Hallows. The shard of mirror is not explained. Where did that come from? why is it broken what is it you know nobody knows it's not explained in the films whatsoever what it is or where it came from it's also quite interesting because it's broken in Deathly Hallows so why didn't they just show Harry picking up the mirror with the letter from Sirius and then Harry like dropping it or something and then it's broken the whole broken mirror thing is just really annoying and doesn't make sense and it's mainly due to the fact that it's not included in 
the Order of the Phoenix film. And we're back after changing the battery. J.K. Rowling basically should have told them to include the mirror. But yeah, apart from that, don't have masses of issues with the Order of Phoenix film. And so, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Number three is the Chamber of Secrets. Quite interesting, I know. What with it being highly ranked in film form when I don't like the book. It's my least favourite book. But the reasons for that is the fact that it's a really good adaptation. In my opinion, the Chamber of Secrets film is a perfect adaptation to the Chamber of Secrets book. We're now on to my top two films and number two for me is The Goblet of Fire. I don't know what it is about The Goblet of Fire film but I absolutely love it and it would be my favourite if it wasn't for The Philosopher's Stone. Obviously The Philosopher's Stone is going to be my favourite. What else would it have been? Well, I tell a lie, I do know what it is. Like what I said about the Goblet of Fire book, everything about the Goblet of Fire, whether it be book or film, is just really exciting. There is always stuff going on. There's always shit going down. A lot of stuff is different, but I'm absolutely fine and happy with the way it was adaptated, in my opinion. Yeah, they did miss out a few things, like, for example, finding out that Hagrid is a half-giant, but that wasn't important to the final plot, so I completely forgive them for missing that out. I feel like everything that was in the Goblet Fire film was supposed to be in the Goblet Fire film. Everything they missed out, fair enough. The soundtrack, all the scenes, Goblet of Fire, all together, book and film, I love it. And so yes, finally, number one, my all time favourite Harry Potter film is of course Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It's the place where it all began. I'm not just saying that because it's the first film, I'm saying that because the first film was my first proper exposure into the magical world. I watched the first film before I read any of the other books. I had tried reading some of the books before, but I think I started on Goblet of Fire and I got really confused. But as soon as I saw the trailers for the first Harry Potter film, I was drawn to it. I really wanted to watch it. I was really excited to watch it. It's got to be the one I've watched more than any of the rest. In fact, I can probably still quote it word from word because I know I definitely could do that when I was younger and I'm not even ashamed to say that. Again, it's a perfect adaptation. It's the most magical feeling one. Uh, it's just, it's the original one. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, a few special effects are a bit dated, but this was 2001, okay. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is definitely, arguably, the best Harry Potter film. <laughs> so there you go, that was me ranking the Harry Potter films. Please let me know down in the comments how you would rank the Harry Potter films. What is your least favourite, your favourite Harry Potter film? If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to leave a like, because that would be awesome. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already, then why not subscribe to join my little magical corner? I make videos every single week so come and subscribe to join the fun thank you all very much for watching and i will see you next time